name is Johan Sonnen, and uh, my day job is a designer. I pretend to run a company, and I also teach at another nondescript university in Cambridge. And let's do a quickie thought experiment here. Suppose that we care more about our uh, health than we do our finances, but that our data is just collected beautifully. It just sort of happens. Um, our eating, our habits, our trips to the bathroom, everything's just sort of collected. Now, this is sort of a thought experiment. Here is my data. Um, the green zone, not unlike the Iraq green zone, is the good zone. I don't know if there's a good zone anymore in Iraq. But if you're inside that, it's good. If you're outside that, not so good. And then here's my score for me as a patient, as a human, a human score, 0 to 100. Am I passing or am I failing? Uh, and this is just one way to see my health in one picture. Now, I can dive in uh, and to one particular section there. Here are my health lab report. This is from a year ago. Don't kill me. Well, I'm, I'll, I'm killing myself, apparently. Um, it's gotten better. But now I can see more and more. It's like the, the Eames 10 by 10 technique, where you zoom in from the galactic to the atomic. I can also see my family. At least I'm pretty sure they're my family. Uh, and look at patterns across them. Now, these are, I got a little nutty here. And this is all of my family's data over time. Uh, but it's at our fingertips if we do this thought experiment. Now, we're getting close to this. We have a metric ton of little micro devices out there. Most of them drive me bananas because they have a, there's a ton of overhead that requires you to engage with them. This requires a pair of pants. Sometimes I don't wear pants, maybe TMI. But the idea here is that we are getting sensors across the household over the past about 40 years. This is about 40 years ago. Um, you know, maybe five years ago, and maybe in about 10 years, this is what's going to happen. It's going to be collected by a DSP. It's going to be collected by um, lots of different sensors, chewed up by machine learning. That, and uh, this is where I think we can really get some inter interesting information and stories. Now, machines and humans, I think, are about to sink in a whole new way. So let's talk about the bathroom. This is exciting. Um, I think this is going to be the invisible sensor haven that we all will come to love. This sounds bizarre. Um, but ideally, we're going to get hair follicles. We're going to get you slough off your genome, uh, I mean your biome, into the sink every day, many times, into your toothbrush. All these things, I think, are going to be collected. It's not going to be called the bathroom anymore. It's going to be called the health room. Um, it's just going to happen automagically. Um, and when we design these things, they have to be wonderful. They have to feel good when you use them, unlike most of the things that we have in our pockets or arms or in the clinics today. They don't feel good. And then I don't want to typically think about security and health at all. I want to think about what's my life going to be, right? What are my healthy behaviors? Um, now, I think we're also going to get, in the next couple of years, maybe two years, this idea of health guards, where my health and my family's health are going to be actively guarded. Just like Citibank now, I subscribe to their fraud detection services for, what, eight bucks a month, right? It looks at for fraud across. Um, I think it's, this kind of thing is going to notify me way in advance uh, of issues with my health, maybe someone spoofing my particular personal treat uh, and uh, health, uh, flu treat at Walgreens, uh, and then it'll protect it. It'll tell me about different things I can do to make a better life for myself and my family. So I know this sounds a little cheesy and a little spine chilling depending on how you look at it, but that's what I want to do is focus my energy on my dreams. Now, over time, I think there's not going to be any serious blood draws. It's just going to be whiffs and sniffs. Um, yeah, it is a little scary. OK, house here, whether we like it or not. I think that, that road is over. And I sort of can't help think about the freak out moment that many people have when watching Blade Runner. Everyone know this movie? Maybe it's a generational thing, but the Voight Kampf machine is just, I love that thing. I'm a little too infatuated with it. But it's a classic scene where it sort of sets up this current Dr. God model that we have, like the judge and jury carries out the, the tech assessment with a tech heavy device, right? Um, but it's not very human by design because of the film. Now, ultimately, it's really not about fetishizing the hardware because hardware is on the decline. It's a commodity. It's a customer's acquisition tool, really. Um, but there are a few spot on health signals that they talk about here. Um, and 
you can get what? From the Kampf machine, you can get the BP, you can get respiration. Uh, you can see the retinal blood uh, vessels and structures in your eye. Now, this is here. This tech is here. And what's compelling, I think, and some compelling examples of this are in the eye is one place where you, you can actually look into blood vessels without cutting the skin. And lots of new techniques are available now to be able to see you know, probably 15 different diseases, chronic diseases, that manifest themselves years earlier in the eye than they do when they grow like a tomato out of your back, right? That's too late at that point, right? So uh, there's Netra, you may have heard of this. It's like the sub-$30 uh, ophthalmologist in your pocket. But right next to that, no, uh, I think it's the, the, that's out of MIT Media Lab, but just as interesting is Eyes First, which is the database of 100,000 retinal scans looking at about 10 different chronic diseases. And that's an open source data set for that Netra can then use to auto-diagnose. That is pretty rad. And look, you're seeing the, the price costs just jump downwards. They're 100K for one of the Zeiss machines about 10 years ago. Now they're getting to 50, probably getting down to 10. And then now you're getting Netra in probably a year and a half. So I think there are other low cost technologies you have probably at home, the Xbox or PS4 or whatever you have, or cheap web cameras that you can get BP and respiration and blood oxygen measurements like that, right? It's, used, it's looking at the brightness of your face and the blood flow through it, and then in near real time doing the analysis. So you can do this on little babies in the nick, right? In real time without touching them with anything. Now, there's even a new Xerox technique uh, a camera that's looking at your biophotons and can see AFib with just a camera at 30 yards away. Pretty rad. Um, I mean, Adamant is coming out with something um, that you can l look at the signatures of health from just your breath, about 20 different variables there. And the, there's also another um, open source product that's talking about and building a one nanometer spectrometer for 30 bucks. And that can tell you if at the micro level, the nano level, whether there's, there's a peanut in your food if you're deathly Ill, uh, adverse to it. Yep, so we're going to have lookout bots in us pretty soon. Prob this, is, this is a little later on where I walk down to my pharmacy of choice, this personal line medicine. I think this is actually very close to coming because they're already prototyping this at a place that rhymes with small greens. Um, and the idea here is that this is our current aging cycle. It's not just about, the technology is great to uh, talk about, but ultimately, I care more about my lifespan and the quality of health. This is my, and most humans, aging cycle. For men, after 18, it's all downhill, the road to perdition, right? For women, it's probably 28. But like, you, you get born, high probability that you need a lot of help here, and then it's all over. Now, what I'm trying to get towards is something that looks like an inverse bathtub curve. For those of you engineers in the room, you may have heard this before. This is crass, but it's sort of, mm, that's how I want my health to work, where like a Sears washing machine, you buy it, it's delivered, you have a great run for a long time, and it dies catastrophically, boom, over, right? Or it dies really early, and just like the first day, you have to ship it back. That's an interesting way to think about health, at least I think it's interesting. And that's what I want. I want a better quality of life for longer. Not the same ass curve that we have now. And so what I'm trying to get to is invisible detection, I think, is the way that we're going to start to uh, get a lot of this, because it's not the wearables. I think that's just a pain. Um, and when it's visible, it has to be beautiful. Now, I've always been a fan of this particular engagement. Woody Allen Sleeper, ever know this movie? It's called The Orgasmatron, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You walk in, walk out five seconds later, and it's a fabulous experience. Why the hell isn't my health just like this? It will be over time. That's just going to be, whether it's going to be at Walmart or it's going to be in my home, that's the model. So here are some, in my last couple of minutes, I'm going to uh, give you a couple of things to take away from here and what to do. But as a United States, and maybe this is how we were taught the world works, especially if you go to Harvard or MIT, that money's at the center. But really, let's pretend for a second that it looks like this. This is the clock along now. I stole it from. But if you don't start engaging more in the policy 
of how health is executed. I think once in your life you have to do that. Uh, yes, you come out with a lot more scars and it's frustrating, but you will have better or more bigger impact potentially on what you're doing So versus just dancing on the edge of fashion or commerce. So one time in your life, get into HIE, get into IEEE, get into HL7, or because I'm an you know, ex-engineer, that may be what I, what I want to do. But there are lots of other organizations where you can do that. Once in your life, figure that out and get into the administration of health at the policy level. The second, th well, the second thing is why we have to do this is that we're doing just what Orbitz did at travel agents, right? We're doing that with medical technology, with culture shifts, um, what we're doing, and design to doctors. Same thing that's happening. So that's why I think the policy side of designing it is key for our participation. Um, the next is we have to figure out what the top 100 health signals are in concert with figuring out what behavior models work with them and do a one-to-end ranking of here all from the emotional, the biologic. You can hear this. Dustin has talked about this in the last session. What's that entire model that really works for humans and for you in particular? Uh, and then also start with a 30 million uninsured, because sure as hell, we are the wrong crowd. We're relatively healthy. We have extra money. When you walk into the doctor's office, you probably should come with your IRS tax returns for the past year and be charged based on that. Right? If you earn 50K or less, free. 250K, massive. Right? Enough said. OK, so the moral of the story. Um, because really what the data does is lets us live aware of our health. Um, because we can process, OK, that's bad, um, but so what? As soon as it becomes quantified and story told in a way that we can grok and look at every day and figure out versus the I have to keep this annoying food diary idiocy, um, this is the start at when the world starts to change, really, when it just comes automatically to you. And you don't have to think about wearing things. You don't have to think about the collection. You don't have to think about the overhead associated with health and healthcare. That's when it starts to become interesting. So in the last two minutes, I'm going to do, uh, and this is where we get to stage zero, is I'm going to talk about a little side project. I've got two minutes to talk about this health axioms. It's an open source project. Here's my son, Udo. He's holding one of the cards. He washes his hands about eight times a day. I wonder why? Well, guess what? It's not always about technology, even though my last rant may have been slightly biased. Uh, you think it's about the latest hardware, the iWatch. Not so true. It's about old-fashioned behavior. Now, it's about sitting down with your kids, hopefully Sunday nights at least, at a minimum. Maybe substituting your lamb or your meat for tofu or fish or something a little more healthy or sustainable. Um, Remember what your mother or grandmother said to you? Go outside, get the hell out of the house and play. Go grab something from the garden, eat it, right? Or bring it up for dinner. Uh, say please and thank you. Um, and I think that's where the health axioms start to fit in. It's a deck of cards, believe it or not, it's analog, very analog, that help people cut through the BS and focus on clear, actionable advice. Now, each card has a single ID on it. This is one specific behavior that we should concentrate on. And on the back are these easy-to-follow highlights, and they allow you to do, take practical action on what you're doing. Now, they're graphic examples. They use like these visual stories to communicate something to you, right? That's the hope about your well-being. Hmm? Uh, and uh, the concepts are hopefully easy to understand, easy to learn, and easy to share, some easier than others. Uh, now, you can use them at home. This is my house. I use them in my practice, uh, in my health room with my boys. Um, and you can actually, here in uh, Palo Alto, we have a couple clinicians actually using them. Kim, this is Kim Carlson, who uses them in her practice, handing them out to patients. You can keep them in your pocketbook or wherever it is. Um, and these are mock-ups. Uh, these are actually installations at uh, a small clinic in Massachusetts that are now using them as graphics as part of the experience. And uh, yeah, that was just a Photoshop job. But it's been proven. Uh, it's my only Photoshopping in here. Uh, but that's, if you did something more like that, that's been proven over and over and over again that people would, 35% more people would use the stairs if they had that kind of signage and kick in the butt. So now I think we're on to something. I'm not sure this is the penultimate. It's just flashcards. Um, but when you think about how much is spent in this as a United States in, it's insane. So I think this is only version one. These are all licensed under Creative Commons, by the way, so you can go snark them on uh, uh, GitHub. There are a few that we're working on now. Meet Your Eats, Avoid Sunburn, 
uh, know your care team. So based on our early feedback from some clinicians, we have these sub packs coming out. Uh, these are basically five that are just good for pre-type two. Uh, now look, absolute compliance is impossible. Occasionally you have to have a cookie breakfast, right? Um, but the health axioms, I think, are a simple way to remind us how to make smart choices and choose healthy habits. Uh, and my assumption here, I've just been them out for about five months, is that they are trying to improve your health, um, both clinically and just as people. So we're looking for feedback. Just come get me, uh, or fire darts, or tweet me, whatever you want to do. So that's my time. Thank you. <laughs>